What's up, everybody? We're taking a short break from new episodes of The Dig while we're busy harvesting, but we will be back soon with exciting new data and insights to help you improve profitability on your farm. Until then, we hope you enjoy a rerun of episode 32, The Do's of Crop Residue Management. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on another episode of The Dig in November. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. Today, we're going to be looking at the residue products and equipment you can utilize this fall that will ensure your soils are prepped and ready for spring planting. Residue. I see what you did there. Look, I mean, what can I say? I'm feeling pretty honey this morning. Let's dig in. Harvest is kicking off throughout most of our marketing area, which means planning for next season is top of mind. As we evaluate this year's crop, we should start thinking about nutrient management options to replace or build soil fertility. One factor that's often overlooked when calculating fertility needs is the value of the crop residue. As yields increase, yay! so does biomass and residue that we produce. Residue certainly poses challenges for planting and can also carry pathogens throughout the winter, but we can use the crop residue to our advantage through proper management techniques. Whether you're harvesting corn or soybeans, residue management at the combine is important. Any step you take to better promote good residue practices will positively impact the following season's planting pass and will continue into stand establishment as well. Corn residue contains large quantities of nutrients so sizing it to manageable pieces will accomplish two things. First, it will allow the planter to manage the residue more efficiently in the spring. And second, it will cycle the nutrients from the residue faster, releasing them earlier. Our PFR research indicates that both mechanical manipulation and the application of residue management products can be effective. The decision might simply be what works best for your operation. So let's break down the best product options for residue breakdown. So in corn after corn systems, the high amount of residue can immobilize nitrogen and make it unavailable to the following crop. Robust and Res Plus are products that contain a combination of low rate micro and macronutrients that help to feed the microorganisms in the soil and accelerate the decomposition of fall residue. By supporting microbial communities, these products increase the microbial degradation of corn residue in those corn after corn systems. Applying them in the fall helps speed up residue breakdown and pay back that carbon penalty early in the growing season. The carbon. What now? The carbon penalty. Duh. Research shows it takes approximately 30 pounds of nitrogen to break down every ton of dry corn residue. So each ton already contains about 15 pounds of nitrogen, but we need an additional 15 pounds per ton to feed the microorganisms that break down the residue. Follow? Yeah, I think so. The theory is that we can supplement these organisms with nutritional stimulants like Res Plus and Robust, allowing them to do more work in the fall and start mineralizing the nitrogen bound in the residue sooner. Gotcha. This year, we're excited to test two new products in PFR, Excavator from Meristem and BioReverse from the Anderson. Excavator is a specifically designed to break down crop residue in the fields, improving planter performance, creating stronger stands, and releasing valuable nutrients to feed the crop. BioReverse is a vigorous microbial package designed to significantly reduce residue stubble. Through its unique formulation designed to compost and break down residue, BioReverse helps to improve seed to soil contact, reduces planter or tire damage from crop stalks, and reverses nutrient tie-up in crop residue. This provides more available nutrients prior to your next season's planting. When it comes to equipment options, PFR has identified two PFR-proven technologies available to also work to address the carbon penalty issue by chopping, sizing, and scoring residue to create smaller pieces or more entry points for the microbes to enter the stalk and to break it down. That's right. Over the years, we've tested different heads and snapping rolls on combines to see what they may bring to the table. 
including the Capilla Quasar Cornhead and the Yetter Stock Devastators, both which are PFR proven. But the real question is, are these investments worth it? One thing we always like to evaluate on the mechanical PFR proven equipment is the acres to pay off. To determine this, we use the price of the specific residue management equipment, use the corner soybean price, and the bushel per acre advantage for each type of equipment. The smaller number on these charts means the residue management equipment pays for itself more quickly. It's important to remember that crop residue is the change we receive in return for our soil fertility investment. So it is crucial that we make efforts to retain and return these nutrients back into the soil in the fall to ensure optimal success the following season. Well, Colin, you know what? I think I'm, I'm resident done for the day. Would you stop? Your jokes are terrible. That's rude. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of The Dig. Stay tuned for a residue management follow-up later this fall as Aaron and I head out to the fields and actually do some work around here. Hey, this is work. We're working right now. Yeah, maybe for them. It's work for us. I gotta stand up here with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you on another episode of The, the Dig. Dig. Hang on. Uh, uh. Sorry. <laughs> Which means it's planting time for ne or planning. I should have read this before we started. One more time. Let's, Let's dig, dig in. in. I just says they're quiet. I just feel like it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know.